business we must know that the penetration of e-commerce is at a little over three percent kevin how is it that we are not touching on numbers that we should be touching on considering the potential that the digital space has i would basically go to mention i will mention uh, things to do with customer education right uh, we've seen so many people as much as they have smartphones or internet connection Mm -hmm. uh, most of them, they tend not to understand what they basically see. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen customers going online, they see the item and they judge as per the picture, but right. they don't get to read the description of the item. Mm -hmm. Once they buy or they order this item and then it comes with a different size, mm -hmm. then they start having trust issues about the uh, that particular item. Right. So I would say uh, education as far as uh, letting customers know how to use these tools mm -hmm. is one of the bigger factors. Essentially, that. once bitten, twice shy. Absolutely. And of course, there are a lot of cases of people being conned, especially when it comes to buying online. Charles, if you could just tell us, what are maybe some of your policies when it comes to returning goods? Maybe a person bought something and they're not necessarily happy with it. What are your return policies? So, I mean, the, the first thing that I'd like to mention is that on Jumia, 90% of uh, the orders are paid on delivery. Right. So first, 90% of the customers get the chance of not taking the product if they are not satisfied by the quality or by the state of the package, mm -hmm. or if finally they, de they decide that they don't want it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one. And then for all, uh, for all our product, except the one for which Hygiene is, a, is an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, you, have, you have 15 days uh, to return the, the product. So it can be for change of mind. It can be for quality issues. Right. It can be for I know, any, um, I mean, anything that is, not, uh, that, that is not in perfect condition with the product. Right. So, and then once you return, I mean, either we pick the product to your place or you have to return it to a pickup station mm -hmm. depending on the mode of delivery that you used in the first place uh, and then you get refunded um, generally in one or two days. Right, and of course these terms usually change with different businesses. Kevin, what are your terms? How can I return a good after I buy it from the corridor market? It's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. We have a grace period of one month mm -hmm. whereby we're able to provide to you once you buy an item but it depends with the complaints which come on board. So if it has something to do with the, the customer not knowing how to use the item, that, now that's a different case. Right. But if it comes to a place where the product has malfunctioned, mm -hmm. there's where we consider such items. So we have policies which guide our, our customers right. and they are communicated well in our website. And even during the purchase, they are able to agree on those terms whenever they are purchasing these items. Right. Sure. And of course, we have Black November or Black Friday. It's, it's generally a time when people go to buy mostly electronics and we find other items that have a lot of discounts. What exactly is Black November or Black Friday for Jumia? So, so for Jumia, it's very, it's very special because we have, uh, I mean, we have grown the Black Friday franchise uh, along with, uh, with Jumia. So we are working almost the entire year at Jumia Kenya to prepare uh, Black Friday and to make sure that we can deliver a good campaign. So for us, it's a very special event. Right. Um, but we also, I mean, we also want, I mean, we want to provide discounts and offers mm -hmm. uh, to the customers because it's, the, I mean, it's the opening of the shopping uh, the shopping time of the year, right. uh, the festive season. So it's more than just discounts and offer. We want it to, I mean, we want it to be a celebration, mm -hmm. uh, obviously for the team, but more importantly for the consumers. Right. And as a consumer, I, I must admit that most of the time I do look forward to Black November because that's when you get a lot of discounts on goods. Yeah, Kevin, right. if you could just tell us for up and coming, you know, e commerce platforms. What is the essence of having periods within which you have discounts or you have offers for your customers? Basically, those periods tend to provide opportunities for those people who can't afford these items during other seasons. Right. So these are the, uh, like you can, we've been able to notice that uh, mm -hmm. consumers have been saving up for 
November offers. Right. Yes. Yeah. So for students, uh, these other families who really do not have enough income, mm -hmm. they are able to save all uh, throughout the year, mm -hmm. and then during November's are the ones. Uh, it's the time when they get to purchase the items they need. Mm -hmm. So we can also uh, see that other buyers, they are also looking forward for December right. when they will be traveling home to mm -hmm. families and yeah. whatnot. So November gives them the opportunity to be able to afford these uh, items for them to either gift their loved ones back at home. Mm -hmm. sure. And Charles, of course, during this time, there are products that usually sell either really fast or really slow. Are there maybe products that you usually have in surplus during these times? Is there something that Kenyans like the most during Black November? Yeah, I would say that during Black Friday, um, obviously all electronic categories mm -hmm. um, are, are selling very fast. Uh, TV is definitely one of them. Um, appliances uh, have been selling very fast uh, this year, cooker, fridges, things like this. Uh, phone is obviously a, um, a, big, a big category uh, during that time of the year. Uh, but we have seen also other categories, uh, typically beauty products mm -hmm. are, doing very, uh, are doing very well. And, uh, and fashion, mm -hmm. fashion item, which is a bit new online, I would say in Kenya, are also coming up. Right. And of course, during this time, you get a lot of sales. There's a lot of traffic on these sites. How do you maintain a balance of ensuring that you are meeting your sales and that you are dealing with any customer complaints or returns? Basically, we, we've put um, more resources. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes a customer management team. Mm -hmm. We've also been able to uh, increase uh, uh, the number of items in our store. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, because at this time we've already known the items which go very fast, like he had mentioned, uh, things to do with the fridge. Right. Uh, it's the same items which are really going also very fast in the second hand market. Mm -hmm. So these are the items which we prepare early mm -hmm. so that uh, whenever these orders come in, we're able to meet uh, the, 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 the demand. Mm -hmm. And meeting the demand is very important, especially considering this is the festivities, this is the festive season. Do you sometimes have a situation where customers would return the goods a little too late? Have you ever dealt with a situation like that? Yes, we have. Um, there are those clients to whom uh, we've worked with them for a long time. Right. And uh, uh, the reasons as to why they would happen to return those items is when they want to trade in. Mm -hmm. They really want to get uh, either an improved version, the less test version, or uh, a bigger size mm -hmm. uh, compared to what they had picked before. So these clients would return uh, uh, for the sake of trading in mm -hmm. with the others. So and and for a larger e-commerce platform, Charles, you would find that maybe you lose that one-on-one -on -one connection with your customers. How do you make your customers feel special? So, I mean, obviously we have, um, we have processes and we have uh, terms and conditions, but we try our best. I mean, we want to be a, a customer-centric organization. We want to be a, a customer-centric uh, business. And we try to, I mean, to keep our customers happy. Mm -hmm. So. Obviously, we need to apply uh, some rules, but when we can accommodate and find a solution that at the end is a win-win, it keeps the customer happy, and for us, it's, it's just, I mean, something we can accept, it's sustainable, it's better because keeping our customer is definitely the best uh, option to grow instead of having to, uh, um, to, uh, to attract new customers. So basically, we try our best uh, through, I mean, or or customer service mm -hmm. and, uh, and all different uh, returns and refund process mm -hmm. to keep our customers happy. Right. And on Matters expansion, Kevin, maybe there are small businesses that are watching this at this particular moment and they're just wondering how exactly that they can come onto the online platform and start selling their wares. What would you say are maybe the steps that they should take when they're coming onto these platforms? Uh, they should keep... Um in check on the requirements that are needed in these uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. We can see like uh, phone numbers, email addresses, uh, some of the required uh, uh, requirements in these platforms. Mm -hmm. And also just having uh, quality uh, items which still have value. Mm -hmm. 
So on the second hand market, we've also seen some clients are able to come with items which do not have value. They are really uh, old. Right. They can't really be bought. So I would advise that they look into that. Mm -hmm. And then how they market themselves also matters. Mm -hmm. So I ad advise them to check on the uh, quality of the images, mm -hmm. uh, the description of the item, right. how they describe the item also matters a lot. Mm -hmm. And also to add on that, we can say uh, having a valid um, contact information mm -hmm. it's really important and herein comes the question of cyber security Charles uh, this is a largely online platform you are dealing with people in the digital space do you maybe have instances especially during the black November where you have a lot of people coming in where your system crashes and of course what exactly do you do as a mitigation measure against this so it, it happened in the past, uh, but Jumia is now more than 10 years old. Right. And uh, we have, uh, I mean, we have grown and we have learned uh, in the past. So this year so far, we haven't had any technical issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, I mean, we have invested a lot mm -hmm. on infrastructure over the last uh, few years. We have done some, uh, I mean, some stress tests uh, in the past few weeks before, I mean, just before the events. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, from a platform point of view, mm -hmm. everything has been uh, super smooth. So if I do come on to these, uh, to Jumia, the site, and I want to buy something even at midnight, it's going to be snappy? Yeah, yeah you can come <laughs> at any time. I mean, you can come at 6 a.m. or at midnight. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is still going to be live. Right. And, uh, and I, mean, you can, I mean, you can process the order uh, any time uh, during the day or during the night. Mm -hmm. And for the corridor market, do you have maybe cybersecurity solutions that you have in place? Are there ways that you're mitigating so that your customers do not come to your site and see 404 error? Yeah, <laughs> we've researched enough and the technologies we've used, they're able to handle the traffic. Mm -hmm. And also with the model that we use, they tend to take the customer straight from online to offline. So. Basically, these users are not affected so much right. in terms of user experience. Mm -hmm. The website is uh, also user-friendly. We've used the design thinking, right. whereby uh, clients of all ages are able to use the platform and understand very well. Mm -hmm. So I can say we are really set for that. All right, ready and set, you say, especially for Black November. And then comes the aspect of user friendliness. Usually the demographic that is on e-platforms, e e-commerce platforms, are mostly the youth. Would you say that Jumia is a user friendly site? Um, yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah, we are pretty user friendly, uh, obviously. I mean, we had customers in the first place that were generally uh, young, urban, connected people. Mm -hmm. But the more we grow, uh, the more uh, we diversify the type of, uh, of customers. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we have independent sales agents. We have something like 15,000 15, uh, J-Force agents, as right. we call them, mm -hmm. uh, in the country that are also able to place orders mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of other people. Mm -hmm. So typically the, the, older, uh, the older consumers or the ones that are not uh, comfortable uh, searching for uh, items uh, directly on the app mm -hmm. or on the website. Uh, they can find support mm -hmm. from some GeForces that are based across the entire country uh, to be able to get the right item they need on Jumia. And would you say, therefore, that when it comes to choosing between your agents and on the e-commerce platform, what would you say is the comparison? Where do customers tend to lean towards? So it really, it really depends. We have some... Uh, older or slightly less sophisticated customers that are starting ordering through agent. And after one, two, three purchases, the trust uh, is there. And then they switch to the app and they start ordering directly uh, through, their, um, through their mobile phones. And wh how, what would you say? There are always you know, sites, especially on social media, that come up. People who are pretending to be Jumia, people who are saying that they're agents for Jumia. How are you dealing with that? So that's a, that's a major issue for us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that we can't control totally. But every time we see some, we are obviously uh, reporting uh, this website or these uh, fake agents. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that we have been fighting against for years. Uh, it keeps coming back. I think uh, the more we go, the less issues we have. Uh, but uh, yeah, it continues. 
And Kevin, would you say therefore that even for you, you have other sites that are trying to pretend to be you and customers are usually diverted? Yeah, it's true, uh, especially uh, there are things to do with our images. Mm -hmm. Corridor really has or uses very high quality images. So we've seen uh, some other online users where they tend to download our images and they post it elsewhere and then they uh, try to pretend like those items belongs to them. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also been having um, other people who, uses, who use our names mm -hmm. uh, out there, pretending right. also to be agents. Mm -hmm. But luckily now with our model, it forces the clients to still get in touch with us right. and confirm if these orders are correct or they are truthful. Mm -hmm. So these are the ways that we use to mitigate such fraud cases. Mm -hmm. And also the agency service that we provide. Right. Um, it happens to be the middle uh, intermediary between the buyer and the seller. Mm -hmm. At any one point, you'll find that uh, these agents are able to help either the buyer to find the right seller or right. the right product, mm -hmm. or the seller would actually use the, the agent to verify if these items are, are really valid. Mm -hmm. Kevin, and your platform is a very delicate platform. You're dealing with second-hand goods. Sure. Have you ever been in a situation where maybe the good is coming not, not from that individual, but from a third party? Have you ever had a case where you had to answer where exactly that product came from? Yeah, we've had situations like that mm -hmm. whereby a, a, a buyer or a fraudster would call or... Um, Mm -hmm. pretend to be the one who's selling right. and when the sell when the buyer goes to verify or goes to the owner's premise to get this item mm -hmm. you find that they end up paying to a wrong person right so these cases are there and we've been able to uh, save a lot of clients by intervening mm -hmm. because at any one point you find that these clients would basically call us to ask us one or two questions about those items. Mm -hmm. So we've been managing to reach out to them and uh, direct them in the correct way of uh, buying through Corridor. Mm -hmm. Buying yes. through Corridor. And ensuring that, have you had maybe a situation where customers are insisting that they have to see the physical shop and now you have to direct them to come and see the good before they buy it? Yes, most of the time, <laughs> most of the time. You know, these are second-hand items. All right. And uh, despite the fact that we do give them enough information, um, some of the customers would really, really, really want to come to the shop and get uh, to see the items by themselves. Mm -hmm. But over a period uh, of time, we've been having clients who've been able to trust us. Right. Some of them, they, as far as Uganda or Tanzania, they just order, mm -hmm. and then we're able to ship to them using even our trusted sources. Mm -hmm. And Charles, maybe if you could just tell us, we always see every week, especially on Jumia, on that particular e-commerce platform, there is a gift that people can look for when they're shopping and they can have that. By the end of the month, I think there's usually one culturally significant prize. What exactly is the one for this particular month? So that's a good question, but I don't have I, I don't have the uh, the answer mm -hmm. because uh, we don't have I mean we don't have one specifically this year. Right. Uh, in the past, we used to have one very buzzy gift. Yes. Uh, <laughs> be it a, a cow, be it a matatu, or mm -hmm. uh, a boda. This year, we don't have anything like this. All right. We have a um, we have a um, I mean we have a couple of uh, gifts. Mm -hmm such as fridges, cookers, TVs, and things like this, but we don't have one very buzzy uh, gift uh, like in previous years. Yeah, and I remember last year's was a matatu, and I was wondering how exactly is this matatu being delivered <laughs> to, to the person who is going the, to win. The, the matatu was actually simple to deliver compared right. to cow. Ah, there, there was the cow. Yeah, the living cow. There cows. was the cow, I think, yeah. the year before. Exactly. And these are becoming, of course, culturally significant things. This is a practice that we have taken from the U.S. where Black Friday and Black November is a very big thing. And now we've tried to make it a bit smaller for us. Talking about making things a bit smaller and, you know, more digestible for individuals in the country, would you say that there is a peak season for Corridor Market? What exactly is the peak month? What exactly is the peak year? 
We usually have uh, days within the month uh, which we consider as peak season for right. Torido. Mm -hmm. And it usually starts from 20s to either 10th mm -hmm. of uh, each month. <laughs> so those are the times where we feel like people are getting salaries. Uh, exactly. I was about to say, I can guess why. <laughs> yeah, sure. So those are the times. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the year, we do not have such data yet. Right. Yeah, so we are looking forward to have. Where do you see corridor market going? The digital space is growing, of course. The penetration of internet, especially across the country, is growing. Where do you see the corridor market going, maybe in the next five years? We are looking forward to expand on our market share, even within the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're also targeting other countries like East African countries, mm -hmm. uh, all the way, if it's possible, to go to Ghana, Nigeria, mm -hmm. if that would be possible. Mm -hmm. But that's the plan and the roadmap for us. And what is the roadmap for Jumia? Jumia is already hitting 11 countries, Nigeria being, you know, the leading country. And a lot of people are turning, especially now that we are seeing a situation where a lot of people would rather purchase things online. What is the future for Jumia? So, I mean, we, we, I mean, we, we have been the, I mean, one of the first uh, platform in Africa. And obviously, we want to be the leading uh, e-commerce platform in Africa. So the plan over the next five years is really to be, uh, um, to be one of the, I mean, the player of, I mean, the one player of e-commerce in Africa and to lead the revolution of e-commerce in Africa. So we do, I mean, we do believe in e-commerce in Africa. We right. think that uh, the online transition is really ongoing. And we think that it can be like 10, 20 times bigger uh, in, the, in a couple of years. So this is really the objective. We want to educate the market. We want to put the right processes in place to reassure the customers so that uh, in five years from now, uh, it's uh, 10, 20 or even more uh, bigger than what it is today. And, uh, and speaking of educating the market, maybe there are people who are watching right now and they're already afraid. They're talking, they're thinking about buying things online, but they're so scared of being conned. What would you say are some of the steps they should th take when they are authenticating what site and what good they should be buying? So, I mean, on, on Jumia, first, um, I mean, first, if you go on the platform, uh, I mean, we, we first authenticate all our vendors and we make sure uh, they are legit vendors, uh, but on top of that, you can get another layer of comfort by picking from more official stores mm -hmm. that are uh, basically very well known and uh, generally official distributors in the country. Um, that's another layer. And then if you pay on delivery, mm -hmm. basically you have almost uh, no risk of, uh, of being, I mean, of being conned or or anything like this. Uh, so basically, if you follow these rules, like going for uh, the right vendors, for the right products, with the right reviews, mm -hmm. uh, you're very likely to get a good quality product. And if you pay on delivery, mm -hmm. uh, then you're, um, I mean, you're not at risk at all. You're good to go. And Kevin, what would you say maybe as we start concluding, what would you say are the steps? I want to buy something, not only from the corridor market, just from the digital spaces. What are some of the steps I should take? First of all, uh, look at the authentic uh, platforms which you can buy. It's good also to read reviews about these platforms. Mm -hmm. Secondly, is for those people who do not know how to use this uh, technology, you can seek help from either your peers, your friends who would, would help you to choose the right thing. Right. Another thing is that you should also take time mm -hmm. to verify some of these items. Uh, we have tools in these platforms which makes you to find it easy to compare. Mm -hmm. you, when you read more description about these items, you can compare and get uh, to know what uh, basically what you need. Mm -hmm. It's also hard for people to, I've seen it's also hard for people to buy things from social media. Yes. Simply because uh, social media is open. Uh, the people who are posting on social media, these are freelancers, so to speak. Uh, uh, the information they provide uh, relies with them. So you have to really be careful uh, when you're consuming such information from, from social media. Mm -hmm. Sure. And maybe any parting shot for any of the youth watching the marketplace. I want to start selling things. I want to be the next corridor market. What would you tell them? Um, um, you mean to start? I mean to start. Good. Um, <laughs> I would advise them to 
really know their market, mm -hmm. uh, research more about their market. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, secondly, is to be innovative on the services they provide. Mm -hmm. We can see there are so many platforms which provide really quality services, so you really have a task there. And I'm also seeing, um, advising them to be able to look at the technologies they're going to use. Right. They are those which are outdated, so you don't want to invest on outdated technologies. Mm -hmm. And um, also look into uh, policies which are governing the space. Mm -hmm. True. And Charles, maybe I want to be the next Jumia in a couple of years. Maybe I have goods that I feel like a lot of people would be buying online. What are some of the tips and tricks you'd give me? So, I mean, if you want to, if you want to be a vendor on Jumia, mm -hmm. it's pretty easy and uh, we have a, a very well-defined uh, process for, for the onboarding. Mm -hmm. Then I think if I have to just mention a few, uh, a few tips, uh, it's important mm -hmm. to select a clear product category. If you start selling a bit of everything, generally you don't know your product, you don't know your market, mm -hmm. and it's more complex. So um, I would advise to pick a niche uh, a, a niche category that you know well, uh, that you know where to source. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, the supply and the sourcing part is very important because you need to get competitive prices mm -hmm. and you need to know what the customers are looking for. So if you start like uh, buying a bit of everything, mm -hmm. you won't get a lot of visibility on the platform mm -hmm. versus selecting a niche, I mean, building a, de I mean, a consistent and decent assortment at mm -hmm. the right prices, mm -hmm. uh, then you will get the right visibility and you will start selling uh, relatively fast. Mm -hmm. So pick a niche, know your product, know your technology, ensure that you have maybe a direct connection with some of the markets that you're trying to reach or your target audiences. Thank you so much for watching The Marketplace. This week, we have been talking about e-commerce. How exactly could you be using e-commerce to your advantage? How exactly you could be making sales? And how can you protect yourself?